Back in the garage, I splurged and bought some big meats for the supercharged Grand Cherokee. These are 33, 1250. Now, anyone that's been following this build with the supercharged 4 liter knows that this thing is stock everywhere else. There's nothing done to it. The blower is the first thing that has been done to this aftermarket wise. So, right now I know it's not, I don't know how drivable it's going to be. I've got three inch pucks coming. I'm going to do a budget thing for right now so I can keep it on the road. And then I'm going to start looking at ordering DOM and ends and, and, and Himes and everything to build my own suspension. I had a 2000 XJ, I spent a crap ton of money, and you're just, you're not getting that money back if you sell it or you wreck it, it's just gone. And I'd like the experience of building my own stuff and try to do it on a budget and show that to you as I go. Maybe it's something you want to do. But right now, I've got this thing, uh, I think the back's about the same. I've got it picked up so that the tire is kind of lined up with the wheel where it's going to sit. And we definitely got to, I'm going to take the bumpers just off for now. But you could trim it, but if you hit any bumps, it's going to kill it. Other than that, we're kind of fitting. Let's take a roll back a hair. Other than that, it kind of work. And that's at factory ride height because the jack's on the axle. I've got three inch pucks coming, and I'm just going to make shock extensions for now. Um, depending on how far I get, I may just order shocks when I, when I, get, to, when I get to my paycheck. Because I don't, it's all out of pocket. So what I'm going to do right now, since I deleted the AC, I haven't got rid of the condenser. I'm going to rip that crap out. I'm going to take the bumpers off. I'm going to set some jack stands under the, under the frame. And I'm going to let the axle droop three inches so that I can see how the tire is going to look with those pucks in there. And see how much more suspension travels left in the control arms maxing out or the shocks going to full extension. But well, let's get to it. Well, let's see. That's about three inches there. So this is about where it's going to sit with three inch pucks. Center ish. Suspension's going to roll back a little bit. But that's, that's kind of going to work. I think. I think it'll work. I think it'll work back there. The bad part about the back is that you can only go so far forward with trimming because there's not a whole lot here. And then you're into the door. But I'm confident it'll work. Got one mounted. Eventually I'm going to get wider wheels. But for right now, it's on there. They work. I've got it still up on the jack stands. Uh, my pucks didn't come in today like they were supposed to, so I'll have to do it tomorrow. Once again, it's just going to be a cheap, cheap setup for now until I start building my own stuff. So I'm going to get the other one on the other side, and I'm going to take the jack stands out and slowly let it down. Watch well, it. I don't have to do that. I can just pick up the jack, let the axle come up, and just see how much stuff it starts hitting. so bad. Oh, if the back fits like that, I don't need to lift it at all just to drive it. Straighten the wheel just right. Oh yeah, we're, it's perfect. Look at that. No way. Obviously, 
you couldn't do a whole lot of driving with this like that <laughs> but but it works so i'll be mounting the back two tomorrow just been doing it two at a time taking them to work um this is gonna work the cheap three inch lift shock extensions is gonna work bumper with a three inch Let's see where we're at all right now i know this isn't perfect like ride height we're off the jack stands but we're picked up on the front so this should actually be a little more compressed than it usually would be but we'll check out we're at about two inches so we'll take we'll let this droop to, to five which would be as long as our pucks actually are three inches that's what we'll have and then we'll get an idea of what it's going to look like See what that looks like right there. Right, four, four and a half. A little under five, about five. So when the pucks are in there, we should be sitting like that. For anyone else that's doing this that, that wants to keep their bumper, you can just trim this. You could just cut it, and I may do that, but for right now I'm just going to get it out of the way. But it's not it's not going to be that bad. You could just, just right there and still maintain the rest of it. So you don't have to take it off. Now, we'll see how the back is. I'm sure it's the same way. I'm sure you could cut it, and it'd be fine. Got the bumper off and the grill and the headlights and stuff out. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily necessary to get the condenser out, but we're ripping the condenser out. And I'm also going to get rid of the crash sensors while I'm here because I don't want to do something in the woods and get hit in the face with the airbag. And uh, probably get rid of this turd right here. Don't need that. Charcoal canister and such. It's a woods jeep. We don't need that emissions crap. It's the next day, and the spacers came in. That is a hell of a chunk of aluminum. Um, I didn't know, and I found out that the uh, if you put the front springs in the back, like the the four liter ones are supposed to be like three and a half inches at the in the back, and if you use the V8 springs, it's four inches in the back. So I don't have those. So I'm gonna stick the pucks in for now. And I'll probably go to pull apart this weekend and get some front springs, probably out of the V8, just for a little more carrying capacity. Hopefully it doesn't ride too rough, because I'll put the puck in there now so I can drive it. But I don't like the, the puck being on that. Up here, you got this big old thing. That'll be there. There's still plenty sticking out. Back here... You put this on there, there's, there's not really a whole lot going to be holding it from wanting to... I don't know that it's going to want to kick out. It should be under enough tension. But I just don't like it, so... And this is only 3 inches, and if the, the 6 or the 8-cylinder front springs pick it up that high without the puck, then that'll, that'll work. That'll be much better. I just got to get the front down a little more. This is as far as I could get it to droop with the shocks off, which isn't enough to get that out of there. I might have to get a spring compressor if I can't get it to articulate enough. The bushings may be holding it. I'm probably going to crack every every bolt loose, pull the sway bar, because it looks like it could be holding it up too. And uh, we'll see if I can get enough stuff pulled to let it fall. Well, here's what I figured out. I unhooked all that stuff. And it still wouldn't go down far enough because it maxed out the control arms finally. After When I loosened the bushings, it all sagged some more. Then the control arms held it, so I pulled the bolts out of the control arm, and it's still, still not quite out. But I'll be able to get it out now. I'll just push down on it. So that's the easiest way to do it. Pull the control arms. Leave the upper ones on. Let every, the, every bushing loose because every time I loosen another bolt on the arm, it drops some more. But that should be enough for me to pry the other spring or pry the springs out and get these pucks in. I got one on there. Now I'm gonna put the link in the description for these. I wouldn't buy them. They uh, they're very nice looking. The machining and everything. 
but it's like they did the measurement so tight as if this was going to be perfect maybe and it may still be too small but i've been sitting here with a drill with a D aluminum deburr bit just going to town i've been at it for maybe half an hour grinding out aluminum to make that fit and i still had to hammer it on now you might like that because i did have to hammer it on it's tight which means it's going to suck to get back off when i get regular big springs so don't buy these well they're all in there what i did when i had everything loose was i put my knee here well this side actually really sucked i put the spring in from the back took a pry bar and like did steps with a screwdriver and it was really scary yeah. step one have friends step two get them to help you because uh it sucked doing by myself the other side wasn't so bad because it's away from, I guess, the, the, all the links over here kind of hold this better. That side, I just knelt down on the sway bar and just pushed the spring in. It was fine. Now, I'm not proud of this, but like I said, I'm super budget. I just need to get it out of the garage. I didn't order shocks, and uh, it was already at full extension, so I went to Tractor Supply and made myself some really, really cheap extensions. So, judge me harshly, do what you're going to do, but it's going to work. Now, the sway bar won't hook back up because it's already at, it's already so bound up, and um, it doesn't really matter. I don't need it. Eventually, I might want a sway bar and, and get the longer lengths, and, but by that time, all this will be better. I'll make arms. I'll get rid of that, get proper springs, get proper shocks, proper everything. This is a super budget build. Well, that's it. That's a 33 with a 3 inch lift on the front. Now, there's still some weight on the jack stands in the back, but that's about where it's going to sit. Now, I thought it had more room. I just have to trim the bumper, but I didn't realize just how far the axle is forward. So, let's see. This thing's going to sit so close. Because right now, this is at, well, this is full sag. But it's going to be damn near touching if it's not. But that's without the puck. Like I said, I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to get another set of front coils to put in the back. But I'm just going to do the puck for today if I can get it in there. And I really can't fudge that shock. So I hope it's long enough that it has a little travel just so I can drive it. Not, not in the woods, not flexing. Um. I may do some digging, see if I can find something at the local parts store that will just bolt in and be a little taller, and that'd work fine too. But I'm going to get to taking this apart. Definitely do not buy this garbage. At least not for this vehicle, because this is cut for the frame there. The rubber bushing doesn't fit, and this doesn't fit the spring. It's a different size. No working. Garbage. I got them in there. I uh, I cut this lip back that was hanging down. Just enough for that uh, the pigtail to go into it. And it locked in and it's working fine. I still want to get the another set of ZJ front coils to put back here. I think it would be better than having a block. Especially since there's nothing to hold it from popping out of there if it gets crazy. So I'll just have to keep that in, under consideration. I plan on going to pick a part tomorrow, so it's not like it's going to be a, a long time thing. And the shocks were too short. By an inch to even get the bolt in under full uh, full compression. So I had to do something about that. There's the Jeep one. This is a, I have a Dakota, so I looked at its shocks and I was like, well I can modify that to work for tonight. So I went and got a set of Dakota shocks. For, it was not mine's a 99 Dakota shocks and I knocked out this on that side and all I had to do was trim these two down to the rubber and it bolts in so it's probably not perfect but it's gonna work for now and it was cheap enough that that I don't care it'd be all right there it is it's a ZJ with a three inch budget lift with 33s I'm sure you can't get crazy hard on turning or full wheeling, 
but they're on there. I'm probably going to trim this. And look how close the back is. Dun, dun, dun. There's uh, about an eighth of an inch. I'm not worried about it right now. I'm not going to go off-roading. It's supposed to snow here shortly, so I don't know. I may end up accidentally ripping those off. But maybe tomorrow, after I go to pull apart when I do the other springs, I'll trim that. My plan is to do the, uh, not put uh, rock sliders, but to cut that out. Cut out the rocker and put a 2 inch by whatever wide and just have that across there. Which will shorten that up and I can trim it back some. I also, like I said, this is just step one. I want to make control arms, get springs, do everything right as I go. But when I make control arms, I'll just make them longer and shove the axle back where it's supposed to be. Same thing with the front. I'll make them longer and shove it back forward where it's supposed to be. Because there's not a whole lot you can do besides cut that to the door. And I don't want to do that. Not yet. I mean, I'm like, I really just want to cut it and make it an absolute woods toy. But I'm also like, I really don't. But I'll probably be, I'll be gentle and I don't want to cut that. And then, then I'll accidentally slide it into a tree. And then it won't really matter. So, so I'm torn. But either way, if that rips that off later on tonight while driving it, I don't really care. Be all right. It's just going to take that plastic piece and chuck it across the highway. So, back bumper clears. Uh, clears without being loaded. And as the suspension cycles up, the axle is going to go back. But it's not going to go back as fast as it goes up. So, it will make contact. I can't go to town. I'll have to be easy. Um. Well, I mean, that's step one. It's up in the air. My tires were bad. Dry rotted, started shaking like hell, so they were coming apart. I didn't want to buy 30s or 31s. I wanted to end up with 33s, so I just did this. And now I just got to make it work. So, that's everything you need to do this crap lift. <laughs> to make your 33s kind of fit. And if you're, uh, if you're Sawzall happy, that's not a problem. This was a dirty, crappy job, but it's done. It'll work for now. Uh, I've seen a lot of people asking what what you can do, what what lift to fit 33s. It really depends on how much you want to cut. Because right now they're on there. You couldn't flex hard. You can't do a whole lot, but they're on there. So if that answers some of your questions, at least it'll answer some people that think they might want to do a three inch lift with 33s. This might change their mind real quick. Don't do it. This is only going to be like this for maybe a couple weeks, and I don't drive this every day. I've got a bunch of trucks and cars and crap. They're all garbage like this thing, but, but I've got something else to drive. So, hopefully this helps. If anyone has any suggestions as far as other budget-friendly things, I think I'm going to get a JD Squared 2 bender and buy DOM and start doing those things because that's just something I want to get into. I hate paying... 200 something bucks for some ridiculous arms that, that I could make now Some of those things you can't make them any cheaper there you can cut corners, but to make the same product It's going to be just as expensive But I don't want my YouTube channel to be this is how you bolt stuff on I want to make it I want to make it I feel more satisfaction doing that Rather than anybody can just buy some crap and bolt it on like, Woohoo and if you do that that's fine you just want to go play i like building things that's what i do so we're gonna keep doing that so please like subscribe and thank you for watching